this is the Stormy Willow Podcast, a light-hearted, balanced examination of the paranormal. The best part of waking up is just in your cup. Just kidding. Hey guys, Stormy Willow here. I'm your host, Sarah, along with Adele. I don't know where that came from. <laughs> it is like Monday <laughs> evening. <laughs> I think that's a sign I might need some coffee. <laughs> it's a Monday. Okay. We usually don't record on Mondays, guys. So that's what that vibe is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the look on your face. I'm so glad I went with it. <laughs> and it's like you didn't work our name in there anywhere. It was just straight up the Folgers commercial. <laughs> it was just straight up Folgers. Um, Folgers, if you'd like to sponsor an amazing podcast, I would like to throw out Stormy Willow, um, yeah. paranormal loving sisters here that, you know, we pick a topic that we spin on a wheel and we research it and we tell you all about it and we do booger news and hear astrology forecast and it's just a great show. We could really use your sponsorship and your, and your caffeine. And, uh, yeah, our connections to Bojangles as well. But yeah, I mean, we do have connections to Bojangles. That, yeah. So, yeah. So what's up, Adele? Adele um, is sounding extra raspy today. Uh, it's her birthday last, you know, week, and now she's sick. She party too hard. Not. <laughs> Not. Yeah, I. I don't know. I got this crud going around, and yeah, that took me out for a few days. Yes, poor thing. But I was eager to get back, so you'll have to suffer through this with me. <laughs> Birdie's here for oh. it. She's, uh, I'm here for it. It's Aunt Lily, I'm here. All right. Oh my gosh. Well, speaking of people that are suffering through things, I have a really great story for you guys. So, you know, it's almost Labor Day. And I mean, I don't know about you guys where you are listening from, but here we're already back in school. So, you know, everybody's kind of back in the swing of things. And so uh, my story, my book or news story, um, today comes from our friends at apnews.com and this is from new york where a kid uh decided that he didn't want to go to school and he wanted to play hooky and a tv news helicopter crew spotted him on top of a building on top of the roof of his new york city building playing hooky <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this nine, nine, okay, nine-year-old boy left his Brooklyn apartment at around 7 a.m. on Thursday and did not show up to school. So obviously, um, you know, the school notifies the parents, parents call the police, and um, they gave the police a description, and he was wearing an orange tie because he goes to, I guess, a private school, and that's a part of their uniform. So the CBS station, like, well, let's send a helicopter to the scene and see if we can, you know, try to spot him. And so the reporter, John Rice, spotted the boy on the rooftop of his family's building. And um, Eric and the pilot were circling around and they saw a person sitting in the chair over at the rooftop. And when they zoomed in, it was the child. <laughs> and so uh, the station called the police and... Um, the police came and got him, and the little boy just put, uh, packed up his computer bag and went off with the police officers. <laughs> and there's there's that. <laughs> okay. He about playing hooky going so wrong. <laughs> that is incredible. So yeah, apparently if you skip school, you do get arrested. Like yeah. my parents say. And I'm like this child is nine <laughs> he's just like fuck this i'm out of here and he just goes right on up to the rooftop it's like i'm just gonna enjoy a nice summer day up here um i'm actually impressed that the police were called i feel like when we were young kids would skip school all the time and it's yeah. like maybe the next day you might get a phone call yeah I feel maybe like it seems like, and I don't know, like parents tell us if they're wrong. I feel like they're a lot more on it these days than it used to be. Because I feel like you would just like get a little, your parents would get a call at some point in the day, like usually after school, saying your child was absent from school today. But I mean, they were notified like first thing in the morning, 
police were involved. I mean, I'm pretty impressed, New York. Yeah, he treated They're it like a, a missing child kid. I would yeah. dare say it was almost an overreaction. <laughs> I mean, they got the helicopter, the, t- the station pilot. I-, I think the nine-year-old would agree with me that it might have been a little bit much. It might have been a little bit. Um, <laughs> can you imagine the story? Like that, he's never going to live that down. But even that time, so and so, you know, Brian didn't want to go to school today. Don't be like the you know the, the CBS or ABC News called the cops on me. <laughs> he was just chilling on his roof. He was just chilling <laughs> on the rooftop of, of the building. And the, so the, many the, the, more the questions. Um, but he, um, because you know, like New York City, they have like the big buildings. But I guess it wasn't super secure for him to get to the rooftop. And what's so funny is that um. So there was apparently a neighbor that had also been on the roof drinking coffee. And he said that he had seen a child playing with his iPad, but he really didn't think anything of it because school for most kids in New York doesn't start till September 5th. But the school that this little boy goes to went back to school early. So he was just like, it's just some kid hanging out on the rooftop playing with his iPad. (laughs) So yeah, I, uh, so... You know, I guess think twice before you play hooky. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. Okay. Yeah. The big question is, will he do it again? I think he's still- I know. Will he do it again? He, <laughs> is, is he going to be like, what could I have done differently? Like, should I go mm. to school with like a note? Just like, show up for first period and then drop out? Like, yeah. The roll call? I'm going to tell you, they were on to him. Like, they were not playing around. <laughs> Can you imagine, though? It's like, there's this guy, Chopper. And it's like, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> and we can never just have that happen with Bigfoot. Oh, there he is. Right? Nine-year-old boy. And then you're wondering, like, did he get in trouble because of, like, you know, like, do you know how much money it costs to gas up this Chopper and it's for you? And... I don't think I would have even been mad if I were there. I just thought it was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if you're already thinking about playing hooky, just make sure you've got your story straight. Um, and maybe just know what your school policy is on when they call. Maybe, maybe go underground next time or indoors. <laughs> he just wanted to enjoy a nice one idea. in New York, you know? He's like, I got my iPad. I'm fine. I'm chilling out. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Speaking of nice days, are you guys ready for our forecast? Sure. Why the hell not? You might be happy to know that we're about to say bye-bye to Mercury retrograde. Yeah. I, I will you, believe it when I see it. <laughs> I guess I'm going to win uh, the Willie Award because I'm the only one that posted about my Mercury retrograde woes. So just a reminder, you have until Wednesday. Oh yeah. Your well, mine was this. You're listening to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, let's just kick it off with today. So today is Monday, which is a weird day for us to be recording, but you know that's how we do. And we've got a quarter moon in Gemini, which is going to encourage clear communication and reassessment of plans, opportunities to discuss feelings of disconnection and digest ideas stem, um, stemming from last week's events. So you might still have some emotions bubbling up from last week, or Adele might have some snot still bubbling up from last week that she's working yeah. through today. <laughs> and then tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, August the 27th, we have Venus and we're calling it Uranus when it's in Mercury retrograde, um, that promotes breaking away from conventional relationships and trying new things. You might want to encourage yourself to allow freedom and experimentation in romantic and social interactions. I'll let you just do with that what you may. And then finally, Wednesday, August the 28th, Mercury ends retrograde. Yes. So Mercury is going to be 
in Leo and it's going to lead to clearer communications. Thank God. Resolution of misunderstanding. Um, but you just also may want to be cautious um, that Venus faces Neptune. So just kind of be wary of potential misinterpretations and um, romantic advances. So that could be embarrassing. So <laughs> just read the rain. Maybe um, don't make the first move. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just some advice there for you. Uh, Thursday, August the 29th, Venus is going to be moving into Libra, and that's going to emphasize love, beauty, and official relationships. Somebody might be making some stuff official. Um, Focus on gentle romantic gestures and deepening connections without pressure. And then finally, Friday, August the 30th, we have positive interactions as Venus and Pluto connect fostering deeper emotional and intellectual intellectual bonds with partners and then i'm going to take us all the way to the first so saturday august 31st we're going to have a reflection on relationships um couples are encouraged to become more vulnerable with each other and then brand new month oh my gosh it's september it's time i hope on september first you're putting out all your halloween stuff if you haven't already but we have Uranus turning retrograde in Taurus, which is going to sen- signal a need to reassess finances, boo, and prepare for unexpected expenses until January. Double boo. Oh, God. Um, Why? Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to know. Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn, urging a critical look at power structures and opportunities for personal leadership. So... Other than, you know, maybe some romantic um, misreadings on Wednesday and maybe just reassessing your budget, we've got a pretty nice week ahead in our forecast. Back to you, Adele. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, anything to get that Mercury retrograde out of here? No kidding. This was a long one. Was it? Even, I mean, woo. It's been, yeah, it's been a long rough one. I thought I was, like, getting off easy until the second week of it. <laughs> then it got me. Yeah. It got so. me good this week, this time. But, I mean, a lot of positive things happened, too, from it. So, yeah, I'm pretty, like, a lot of really good things were happening for me. Um, and I'm really, I'm really excited about it. Very excited. Good stuff. It is. But yeah, the retrograde has been, this has been a rather long one. So I think we're all glad to see it go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and if you can remember way, way back when, our last episode, I, I hope I landed on mystery because that's what <laughs> you, <I> did. Okay. <laughs> you did. You <laughs> did. I should have lied and been like, no, we don't even have that on the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long time since we've covered a mystery. It does. It has been a long time since we've covered a mystery. And also, I don't know, like time's been going so fast, but lately I feel like it's kind of been like, wait, how long ago was that that we recorded a month? And it wasn't, but it feels like it. Yeah, yeah. So I do have a good mystery today. All right. Now I saw that you posted a clue, so. Yeah. And by the time this airs, I'll probably have a second one out there. Okay. Um, so yeah, there are some clues. So based off of that first clue, do you have any guesses? So the first clue, I, I know we're doing something under the sea. Per- perhaps. Perhaps. And so are we covering maybe like the mystery of Atlantis? Ding, 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 ding. Yes. Yeah? Oh, yes. heck yeah. So yeah, that one's kind of a big one, right? So That's a I huge mean, one. Among ancient mysteries, there are very few as captivating and as epic as Atlantis, right? Yes. Um, and what's interesting is I think a, a, a lot of people consider it not a real place. It was more of like that. a symbol, but then you have some people who have devoted their entire careers to finding the true Atlantis. So we'll get into all of that. Um, But yes, before we dive into the topic of Atlantis, get it under the sea, dive in. (laughs) um, Let me think my sources. So first history.com. Oh yeah. Always solid. Yep. So livescience.com, marineinsights.com, 
and thecollector.com. And thank you to ChatGPT for helping me put it all together. Gotta love ChatGPT. Uh, yeah, the conversations with ChatGPT are always helpful. All right, so yes, it is an ancient mystery. Let's start at the beginning of Atlantis, just where it originated, the whole backstory of it, what happened to it, and what people think became of it. I love it. Yes. Let's dive right. in. Bubble, 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 bubble. We're going <laughs> below the sea. Now, we're going to actually go back to before it was destroyed. <laughs> so we'll go back, way back when. All right, so... <clears throat> Plato is the ancient Greek philosopher who first describes Atlantis. Uh, he mentions it in his dialogues Timaeus and Critias. Um, going Latin names. <laughs> yeah, so this is going to be fun. A dark, dark place. I never got Latin. <laughs> Not only do I have a cold, I also have all of these plethora of like Greek names. We'll get into like all sorts of foreign names that I'm going to have fun yeah. trying to pronounce. <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah, so let's start with the great island of Atlantis. So Love. Atlantis, as described by Plato, that's Plato, the philosopher, not Plato. No. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> yes, so Plato, um, according to him, it was a vast and powerful island kingdom located, quote unquote, beyond the pillars of Hercules. Hercules. So, the Pillars of Hercules, which we know today as the Strait of Gibraltar. Um, okay. Which makes me think of ghosts, the Gibraltar <laughs> Hercules. That's what I was thinking too. I was like, I, don't I was like, that's a place. <laughs> I know. <don't see. laughs> I was also trying to think of the play of words with like Plato and Plato. Yeah. So that's we're learning. We're learning. Yeah, a lot. We're learning. We're learning a lot. I mean, we're like three minutes in, and my mind is like... Yeah, so... <laughs> straight of Gibraltar. Uh, the island was larger than Libya and Asia combined. So huge. Okay. That's, huge island. That's some, uh, yeah, we're not talking like, you know, I don't know, like Hilton Head Island. It's like, not like the Bahamas. Big... <laughs> it's yeah. Like, okay. It's a big deal. Okay. And uh, it was situated in the Atlantic. Okay. Not surprisingly. <laughs> so Atlantis was kind of a utopia. Um, it had a society that excelled in wisdom, engineering, and architecture. The island was richly endowed with resources, including precious metals, fertile land, and abundant wildlife. The Atlanteans built a magnificent capital city in the, cent in the central plains of the island. Uh, the city was a marvel of engineering, featuring uh, concentric rings of water and land connected uh, by a series of canals and bridges. So it's wow. just like a super advanced, immaculate place. Yeah. Um, the central city was dominated by a hill where the royal palace and the great temple dedicated to Poseidon, the god of the sea, stood. And the temple was adorned with silver, gold, and precious stones. And oh, inside was a... Go ahead. Like the Emerald City. Yeah, kind of, right? So definitely a treasure if you were to find it, right? <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, so it's just filled with all these riches and treasures um, and like just immaculate designs and it's just off the hook, right? It's just badass and off the hook. And uh, it was also protected by a powerful navy, which made Atlantis or a formidable force. But let's talk about the rise and fall of Atlantis. All right, so the Atlanteans were originally virtuous and noble people. Um, they were living in harmony with the gods and with each other. And they possessed great wisdom, fairness, and moderation, and their society flourished for many generations. However, as time passed, the Atlanteans grew increasingly arrogant and corrupt. Um, oh, no. So sounds, they're starting to sound familiar. Starting to sound a little familiar, right? So their rulers became greedy and sought to conquer other lands, turning their once just empire into a tyrannical power. The Atlanteans' um, ambition led them to wage war against other regions, including the Mediterranean and the peoples of Europe and Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They attempted to conquer Athens, but the Athenians 
with their superior virtue and military prowess, managed to repel the Athenian invasion. I mean, sorry, the Atlantean invasion. Um, angered by the hubris of the Atlanteans, the gods decided to punish them. So they've even pissed off the gods at this point. Dang, well, that's pretty bad. And according to Plato, the gods unleashed a series of catastrophic natural disasters upon Atlantis. Oh, Earth shit. Earthquakes and floods ravaged the oh, island. No. And in a single fateful day and night, Atlantis was swallowed by the sea and vanished beneath the waves. The great island, along with its people and their incredible achievements, was lost forever. Damn. Right? So... The big thing is, was Plato intending Atlantis to actually be a historical account of a true event that happened, or was this all just a symbol and used as an allegory? Is kind of where yeah. it falls out oh, to. I don't and know. Tell us more. I think while most consider it a symbol, there's some that still are like, but what if it was real? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, because you think of like, I don't even know how many explorations yeah. and dives have been done. Right, like, to try to find if this could have possibly like, been a real place or not. Yeah. So that's kind of where all the fun and mystery, I think, comes into. So, yeah. well, a lot of, I think most scholars believe that this is just allegorical. Let's talk about the people who actually go on yes. quests to discover Atlantis or what they think oh, yeah. happened to it at least if it was a real place so this will be the fun part of the story yeah all right so we're just going to kind of cover theories and people and like the wild ride <laughs> what some of these people do to try to find Atlantis I mean that's what I'm talking about I mean but can you imagine <laughs> I think it's really cool to have like a purpose like you know what I mean like that's their purpose they're like I live and breathe to find this lost city or treasure right like, you know like wow so I think yeah people, some of the ones like i have watched like the mini documentaries like it's like their life's work yeah so it's definitely that sense of adventure right yeah it makes really, like, like indiana cool. jones and like, all those fun quests i mean yeah it's a it's definitely a cool quest <laughs> yeah for sure so if you start with, like, people who really made the quest and the idea that Atlantis was a real place, I think it starts with, with Ignatius Donnelly. Um, and this was kind of the birth of modern theories of Atlantis. Um, so over the centuries, the story of Atlantis has been subject to various interpretations and theories. And among the earliest, most influential was Ignatius Donnelly. Uh, he was a former U.S. congressman turned writer and amateur scientist. That sounds well, like right it. for I a mean, congressman. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would call um, him an onion. A lot of layers there. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a good resume builder, too. Can I call I myself an amateur scientist? Right, just just put it on I'm there. just going to add that. I'm adding yeah. that to my resume. <laughs> I said I was amateur. I did not say that I held a degree anywhere. I'm an amateur scientist. I'm an amateur scientist. <laughs> I'm an so, uh, amateur quantum physicist. There you go. And we're <laughs> amateur podcasters. Um, we are amateur podcasters. Paranormal investigators. Yeah. We're just amateurs. <laughs> yes. Um, Maybe that's what we should name this podcast. Amateurs. Amateur hour. Yeah. Amateur hour. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this sounds solid. So amateur scientists. Hey, I think Atlantis was a real place. <laughs> So in 1882, Donnelly published Atlantis, the, I have the hardest time saying this word, the Antediluvian Ooh. World. <laughs> the um, I wish you could pick a different title. That's not a real catcher. It's a mouthful. And, it's um, like we could have maybe done a little, maybe shortened that a little bit, friend. It makes more sense if you know what antediluvian means. <laughs> Which I don't. So that the word means belonging to the time before the biblical flood. So what so he's we saying about like basically like the land before times. Sure. Like, there you go. The land before the great flood. There you <laughs> the go. Not so, the dinosaur land before times. Atlantis land before times. Exactly. So in 1882, he publishes this book. 
And it's pretty much, hey, what if Atlantis was a part of the world before the Great Flood? And maybe the Great Flood is what was the destruction of Atlantis, is what yeah, he's proposing. Okay. That sounds reasonable. Yeah, Please so... And this book and idea actually became one of the most influential works on the subject, kind of sparking other people's interest in it. Um, <clears throat> there again, he argued that Atlantis was the cradle of all civilization and technology, um, <clears throat> that influenced cultures around the world before it was destroyed. So he thinks it influenced everything and then was destroyed. So Donnelly's book sparked a renewed interest in Atlantis and laid the groundwork for many of the theories that would follow. He suggested that Atlantis could have been located in the Atlantic Ocean and that its destruction might have been the source of the biblical flood story. Um, Donnelly's ideas captivated the public and other scholars to get into this idea. Yeah. Um, one other theory, now we're just going to like come through, like run through a couple of theories over the Love it. centuries. So that was already like in 1882, which puts us pretty close to modern times, honestly, on the grand scale of things. Yeah. So we're going to be talking about like mainly 20th century ideas that are kind of going on around the same time. So <clears throat> one theory is sunken continent theory. Um, this is the 20 in the 20th century. It's an idea that <clears throat> that took the search for Atlantis to the Mediterranean. Um, so some researchers turned their attention to the middle of the Atlantic Ocean where the Azores, a group of volcanic islands, rise from the deep. I don't know if you've ever seen pictures of these, but they're pretty odd looking. It almost looks like they surrounded something, and there's something missing in the middle. Wow. And uh, so this is the idea that Atlantis was a large continent that sank due to seismic activity. Oh, kind of um, like tectonic theory a little bit. Yeah, I think this is like the early notions of that, right? So yeah. those ideas are kind of floating around about like you know, were the continents or originally the shapes that they are today? Like, all, all right. of these ideas and, ar like, archaeology, evolution, all these ideas are kind of new to the world. Yeah. Floating around at the same time, right? So one idea is maybe continental drift, I think, is what they're getting at. Right. Um, but this idea is that maybe the continent just completely sank. I don't know about that. <laughs> According to like modern day understanding but it sounds like a good idea to question at the time right right yeah i don't think it's such an absurd idea to question that um so yeah that's kind of the idea is that the continent sank and now you're kind of left with these things that almost look like they were surrounding that continent and it's like yeah. maybe it just like sank and is underground somewhere idea. yeah right exploring so they're like, maybe there's like clues to this seeming mid-Atlantic ridge, you know? And then Richard Ellis, an American marine biologist and author, he was one of the uh, proponents of this theory. He argued that the Azores could be the remnants of a larger landmass that once existed in the Atlantic, a place where an advanced, advanced civilization could have thrived before it was swallowed by the ocean. Alice and others pointed to the geological features of the Azores and the surrounding seafloor as evidence of a possible sunken continent. So they're just saying it looks kind of fishy. Excuse me. So, okay. Like, I can run with that for so long. I think yeah. modern technology and understanding of things kind of rules it out. Like, I don't think anything would just simply sink. But yeah, but especially okay, there, for that time, I think it's pretty forward thinking. Like, yeah, yeah. Maybe. And you know, it begs the question of at least looking into that area right. as far as like what clues you could find. So that that's one idea going around in the 20th century. And then there's also the um, Antarctic Enigma kind of theory going around at the same time. So this one is that Atlantis is in Antarctica. This one's a little bit odd. Um, so the idea was popularized by Charles Hapgood. He suggested that um, Antarctica was once located in a more temperate region and was home to an advanced civilization. Hapgood's theory, although speculative, is based on the idea of crustal displacement, which mm -hmm. posits that the Earth's crust can shift, causing entire continents to move to different locations. 
So if that is true and impossible, this could mean that Atlantis now is buried under ice, maybe even hidden beneath Antarctica. Oh, kind of like the um, Ice Age. But when yeah, the, like, when it's almost like you can... I guess it would... I'm not sure if I fully understand, like, the whole thing underneath it. I, I guess it's just this notion that continents can kind of move. <laughs> like, just completely shift locations. I... I, I I'm not really buying I mean, that. I, mean, I don't with know, modern but, stuff. I mean, I, but I'm just an amateur scientist here. But whoa, <laughs> right? Like I don't know. That just sounds kind of impossible to me. But... It's almost like <laughs> climate change. Like that would totally change climate change. It's like, oh, it's not that the climate's changed. We've moved, and now we're in the right, water. right. <laughs> It's just, oh yeah, just like we've shifted. It's fine. It's like our continents have moved to a different Don't place. Don't worry about climate change. We've just shifted. Let's not right? let that get the wrong hands. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh no. Right? I'm not sure how much I buy that. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you're theorizing at this time, you know, not, you're still learning about the world. Like, Yeah, I don't know if it's like, yeah, oh, where I did Antarctica know. come from? Could it have been this at one Could point? Could it have like, been Atlantis? Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't know. That seems far fetched to me, but I, I am totally game for the yeah, thought. You know, for sure. No stupid questions with these. Like they kind of make sense in the context of the latest and greatest information everybody has about the world. Right, <laughs> so for sure. Um, I just don't know if it holds water once you get to like modern times. But hey, who knows? Who knows? Maybe it's a black hole. <laughs> Maybe a Maybe. black hole moved in the Antarctica. I don't know. <laughs> um, so that's kind of one one idea. And they kind of like go, I, I think they kind of coincide with it's some sort of continental drift or right. moved, of some it. way. <laughs> right? So there's that. And then this one's actually clue one. This is the picture. It's called Bimini Road that I posted on. Okay. Um, our Instagram and Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's like the, it almost looks like a road you see under the ocean. Right? Yeah. So that's called Bimini Road. Um, and this actually takes us to the Caribbean of all places. So <laughs> we're going all over the globe. <laughs> we're going this everywhere. Like, I feel like Atlantis is like, where in the world is a Atlantis? <laughs> Seriously. Who <laughs> knows? <laughs> they're they're kind of running with it, right? In the 20th century. <laughs> Maybe um, it just changes. It just moves all around. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's just like, it's just a migratory island. It just keeps moving just around. Like, right when they think they found it, like, oh, it's time to move. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm tired of that. This is the ultimate game of hide and seek. And this is where hide and seek came from, guys. <laughs> it is. So, yes, amidst of all these theories, the mystery of Atlantis even reaches the Caribbean. <laughs> okay, I would not have... Okay. Oh, this, there, but okay. This one's kind of strange. So, in 1968, divers discovered the Bimini Road near the Bahamas. This underwater formation consisting of large flat stones arranged in a linear pattern intrigued those researchers, and some were like, maybe it could have been Atlantis or parts of Atlantis. Um, and I know that's kind of a big jump to make because this story gets even weirder. So... That was 1968. Let's flash back. Back in time to 1938. Um, this guy, Edgar Casey, he was known as the Sleeping Prophet. So he was kind of like a psychic. I like that, the Sleeping Prophet. The Sleeping Prophet. And this is because he would go into like a trance-like, almost sleep-like state when he would make predictions. And um, in this state... He made a very specific prediction. So in 1938, he stated, quote, A portion of the temples may yet be discovered under the slime of ages and seawater near Bimini. Mm, okay. Expect it in 68 or 69. Not so far away. And he was talking about Atlantis being discovered. So 1938... He said that. He said a portion of the temple would be near Bimini in the year, maybe, like, 68 or 69. And then they find Bimini Road in the year 1968. 
Did this guy make, did this sleepy prophet make any other prophecies? Um, I didn't dig too deeply into them outside of Atlantis. That might be a fun one to cover. Holy cow. Uh, so yeah, I think this guy sounds like a fun person we should probably cover. Edgar like, Casey. Um, Edgar, good old Edgar. So yeah, so beyond the Bimini Road prediction, Casey also frequently spoke of eventually rediscovering Atlantis. Um, and he claimed that parts of Atlantis would rise again and that Atlantean technology and wisdom would be rediscovered. Um, he even suggested that reincarnated Atlanteans would play a role in the resurgence of Atlantis. So it gets kind of out there. <laughs> but I thought that was yeah. a crazy prediction, okay? So, yeah. So 1938, <laughs> he predicted, Whoa. you know, 30 years later... <laughs> That this actually happened they did discover this so anyway that was just kind of odd so some people are saying that maybe somehow there's something to the caribbeans or the bimini road discovery maybe wow. that's somehow tied to atlantis yeah okay oh i don't know but it's pretty weird <laughs> it's a like weird we're just jumping here. <laughs> yeah 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 so um let me see sorry let me get back to that um, and J. J. Manson Valentine, a naturalist and amateur archaeologist, amateur archaeologist, put that one on your resume too. We're really throwing out uh, amateurs, and I'm, I'm loving it. I'm here for it. Yeah, he was among the first to suggest that Bimini Road could be a remnant of Atlantis, possibly a road to a harbor submerged after a dramatic sea level rise. Though many scientists argue that the Bimini Road is a natural formation. Um, the discovery has nonetheless fueled speculation. So yeah, it is sure. weird. It <laughs> it's is. kind of like, whoa. That is I just odd. thought that was odd. And then, of course, some people link it to the good old Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, it's back. Um, yeah, so some say that, you know, the Bermuda Triangle is an area of the Atlantic notorious for mysterious disappearances, like of ships. We covered aircraft. it. We already had an episode on that. So a lot of weird happenings around that area. It's also been suggested that it's a possible location for Atlantis. Um, I guess it kind of coincides with some of the other theories with like, you know, continents just just yeah. reappearing in places. So you can see how it all kind of like ties into that and gets kind of fantastic <laughs> the more we go. Um, so yeah. But what I think really happened, if we want to take it down the clue <laughs> route, I think I think the next two are going to be more of, if it is anything, this could possibly realistically be what it is. Okay. Um, so, the Minoan hypothesis. I think right. this, this is kind of onto something. Um, Spyridon Marinados, I think, was the researcher. And he discovered a city called... Akrotiri, and we'll get into all of that and why we okay. think this ties to Atlantis. So, in the 20th century, the search for Atlantis took a more scientific turn, thank goodness. Because <laughs> we heard some of the other theories going on. <laughs> and also, the rise of archaeology. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go now. So we're, the digging 19... it, we're digging it. There you go. So, in the 1930s, a Greek archaeologist spe- I think I'm saying his name right. Spiridon you, or Spiridon. You sound confident to me. Yeah, sorry if I'm butchering it. Uh, I mean, he, he began to explore one of the most compelling theories associated with Atlantis. The idea that the lost city might be linked to the Minoan civilization on the island of Crete and Terra. Modern day Santorini. Okay. Um, the Minoans were an advanced society. That flourished around 2000 to 1450 BCE. Right time, right Right time, description. right area, right? Check the check. Minoans were known for their advanced architecture, sophisticated art, and extensive trade networks. Also sounds right. like the right culture. However, their civil- civilization abruptly ended due to a massive volcanic eruption on the island of Terra. Okay. All right. Ooh. The eruption caused widespread destruction, and many believe it led to the decline of the Minoan civilization entirely. Um, the sudden and catastrophic nature of this event closely mirrors Plato's description of Atlantis, leading some scholars to suggest maybe this was it. 
Um, and just an interesting fact, also, um, Marinados, he tragically died while excavating the city of mm. uh, Ar Arcratiri in 1974. So I just think it's interesting. He died on the job doing what he loved. So just Gosh. an interesting thing there. So like he died even while working on this. So talk about your life's work, right? Yeah, for like literally. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, that's kind of the thing. He, he strongly thought that maybe this was probably, most likely, if it was a real place, it was probably this civilization, so. Yeah. Have there been any further digs? Or any uh, we'll talk about some modern stuff, but I think, like, the biggest, like, latest discovery with that was that major city, um, Akrotiri, which he was excavating when a trench wall uh, collapsed on him and killed him but um i think that was like a big thing because it might have been like the main city to it which might further tie it to some of the description in plato's works but um that makes the most sense to me <laughs> as yeah. far as like talking about time place so far culture, yes right so i'm like okay that could possibly be it um but then we also have a more modern exploration as well because um, he was still, you know, excavating that into the 70s. And then most most recent, in the 21st century, we have Richard Frund. And uh, I don't know how to say this one, though. And and the marshes of Danyana, <laughs> I think is how you say it. Sounds good to me. All right, so this is like the latest, the absolute latest. Okay. Um, maybe this could also be Atlantis. All right. Like Atlantis is a real place. So in the early 21st century, the quest for Atlantis took a new turn with the work of Richard Frund, an archaeologist from the University of Hartford. So Frund and his team used modern technology like satellite imagery. That's already a game changer, right? Yeah, it is. Ground penetrating radar and digital mapping to investigate a new potential location for Atlantis, the marshlands of southern Spain near Daniana National Park is where they're thinking it could be, based off okay. of the latest. So, Friends team discovered what they believed were submerged ruins and circular structures beneath the marshes, which could correspond to Plato's description of Atlantis' uh, concentric rings, if you remember that description. The team also found evidence of ancient floods in the region, suggesting that a catastrophic event could have caused the destruction of a significant settlement. Mm. Friends proposed... That's right, Froon proposed that this area might have been Atlantis, or at least the source of the legend that inspired Plato. So he thinks he found it. <laughs> okay. So he thinks it might be in southern Spain, under those marshes in the National Park of Danyana. Okay. Um, and also, Marinados, he strongly thought that yeah. maybe the Minoan were yeah. actually the culture described. So it sounds like there's two solid possibilities, but no certainty, right? Yeah, so it seems like even though we've gotten farther, we still don't really know. Yeah. Um, and how would we ever really know? Like, how would we know? Yeah, we I guess it? you would have to try to excavate all this stuff. And but do you know what I mean? Like, how would right. we know that, oh, this is it. This is the lost city. Unless it's like something labeled Atlantis. <laughs> Yeah, what if it wasn't even called that? Right, like, who knows? And, like, what if... I don't know. I mean, and you just think about everything that's happened. There could have been a, more of the lost cities than just Atlantis. Right, I mean, and, and there are so many floods. There are, right. there are great floods. <laughs> exactly. But I don't know. I, just don't know, like, you know. I don't know what would signify, like, I have found it. Right, or you... Like, I feel like, in my mind, okay, and I, I don't know if you feel the same way, it's just me. When I think of Atlantis, I think about this grand, under-the-sea, like, castle land. But I don't think that's really accurate. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Do you know what I mean? Right. In like, reality. Like, if it truly even existed and wasn't a metaphor, per se. I feel like that's like how, how would it... Right. To us in modern times, how would it look so significantly different from any right. other theme yeah. from that time period? Yeah. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, Me either. I don't I'm even know how you would begin. Looking for 
not only are you looking for a needle in a haystack, you don't even know what the needle looks like. Right. It might not even exist. So it not, I, and, and it may not even exist. So it kind of puts this whole Atlantis thing in a whole different perspective than like what one may think when they think of Atlantis. Like me, I'm thinking like, oh, they're going to find it under the sea and it's going to be this big old. Right. Thing. It's basically going to be like um, the Grand Hotel of PTL in Fort Mill, but underwater. <laughs> Yeah. In my mind. just like a decrepit old like oh yeah <laughs> that's it i guess that was cool in its time <laughs> yeah like you were saying like when we're really looking at like that time when we're calling things grand like and then you're comparing it like to today's grand it's kind of like or, or right or like, even like I, I feel like archaeologists have found the grandest of what we can find like like athena's yeah. temple and it's like I don't know. Maybe it would look like that, <laughs> right? So I don't. I know. guess. I guess Here. maybe an expert that's like, no, this is grander than all of that would. Right. Um, and I'm like, how like, do we know? Like, all we really have is Plato's depiction, right, to go off of. Right, just the description of it. Um, Which, who's to say that? I mean, he could have messed up. Like, well, at that time, it was like this grand, and now, that yeah, means it's different. Which I mean, I feel like the I feel like the the last two ideas, if it's anything, it's probably those. But yeah. I will never know for sure. I think it will. It's always going to be a mystery. Um, I think it's just going to be one of those things that people are really just some people, not all people, but I think some people are just looking for treasure. Oh yeah, I mean, I would want to find something <laughs> too, right? Just treasure hunting. Keep looking. If I mean, because if you don't find Atlantis, you at least maybe find something cool. <laughs> yeah like it'd be in like a museum or you know something you could have unearthed that you didn't i mean but it sounds like we would need a scenario like edgar casey predicted where like atlanteans are like this is atlantis and we're atlanteans yeah and like where we don't know how to i mean i'm sorry i mean i mean i guess unless we get out the ouija board i i would be willing to do an underwater ouija session how would you? I, mean, I say that three times. So underwater we just says it. Underwater we just says it. <laughs> underwater we. <laughs> it's too underwater, hard. Just it. underwater we just says it. Underwater we just says it. So that's I hard. Mean, that's very hard. If they, but I mean, like we don't really know what we're looking for, you know. So. Yeah, and then um, crazy. just as far as like criticism, which I think is where most scholars kind of are, they argue that Atlantis is purely a myth, a story invented by Plato to illustrate his philosophical ideas um they point out that plato's account of atlantis was written over nine thousand years after the supposed events took place and that there is no mention of atlantis in any other ancient texts um, moreover the story of atlantis contains many elements that are common in mythological tales such as the theme of one great civilization brought down by divine punishment so they just think it's kind of too allegorical anyway to really seem like a piece of history but i don't know it begs yeah. the question still it's still hard if it was I made mean, of like that much gold and jewels and stuff sure look <laughs> right why not yeah i mean i'm kind of like going back to what you said i mean you still might unearth something some new discovery even if it isn't technically atlantis so why not why not go and for who it? knows? I mean, who knows? Like you said, like I don't, I don't know. Like, is it really a metaphor, or did it really exist? Like, right. I and I guess other than if you're treasure hunting, I suppose it doesn't matter because we still didn't learn anything from the lesson of the story. Yeah, I was like, and obviously that's the that's a that's something we we have absolutely not learned our lesson on. Um, and it's like you know, is it like kind of one of those like you know with the Bible, the biblical story situations? Like, well. Like Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. It's like Atlantis. Like is it kind of like like meant to be kind of like a fable? I almost feel like it is, and that's why he it it's called Atlantis and you don't hear I feel like if it because were like a known place. Yeah. To me it's it's not real in that it's either he specifically made it up for an example, or it's not real in that it's like something called an ideal state known as like atlantis like nirvana yeah, so, yeah you know what i mean that's a good point yeah that's, that's just my opinion <laughs> yeah i mean it makes sense i mean it really can't be proved or disproved 
Yeah, but I mean, if, if if I mean, I would be willing to go look for the treasure though. I just think oh, it's sign like, me up. the most epic treasure hunt ever. So I love the adventure. A hundred percent. These like, people have that do go on these quests. I think it's so cool. Like, yeah. I mean, I've never been on a quest like that in my life. And it's really, I think that it's so cool. Like, who knows what you're going to find and learn. Yeah. You Probably know? more I mean, more questions. Probably more but... questions, but, like, but you're out there doing it, you know? And I think that's so cool. I mean, you might find some more fossils of, who knows what you'll unearth. But I think it's, I still think it's cool, but I'm like you, I, I think probably you'll have way more questions. So you will answer. Yeah. Be sure to take it. a... A pickaxe in case you end up in an Antarctica. Yeah, I just look prepared. <laughs> or, you know, bring your sunscreen in case you end up in the Caribbean. I don't know. Although Maybe. it's going to be really funny with Antarctica starting to thaw out in places. Why well, I mean, start buying shit? From, what did like, we this do, time. though? <laughs> like, this whole, like, it starts melting and like, there's this whole city and, like, the people come back to life and the creatures. It's like, why does this seem greek <laughs> i mean it doesn't oh seem God. that far-fetched i mean considering <laughs> what we've been through the last several years i mean let's just be real would right. we really be surprised right i would not no, i don't know anything I, is possible i don't know brood i don't think it's real i think it's such a fun adventure and i would totally go on a hunt mm-hmm. yeah i mean once folgers and bojangles send us a check i mean maybe we could get in on the dig oh yeah i mean Totally. I would love to do that. They want to, you know, maybe we can write a grant. <laughs> like, we should do <laughs> We would have our, our Bojangles like big gulps out there. That's what we're doing. Bojangles, Stanley Cups. <laughs> Thermoses. <laughs> well, you would know it was us because we would be like, the colors of Bojangles, in case you don't know, are yellow and red. So we would definitely... <laughs> We would be there. Our Bojangles like safari hats. <laughs> like what what if we were there on like a Bojangles like quest and we're we're the first people to make contact with the like Atlanteans? And our shirts say it's bow time. Like <laughs> you want some sweet tea. <laughs> Finger looking good. It, just, it makes me think of like that night in Indiana Jones <laughs> with like oh, you know and he's like been waiting for centuries and we're like hey <laughs> this is Atlantis <laughs> we're gonna open the Bojangles here uh, but what is the Bojangles like <laughs> like just let, let me pour you some deliciousness you just sit right there <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, that is just a little <laughs> taste of what we can do for you, Bojangles and Folgers. I'm saying. Anybody, really. So that was very interesting. I think you kind of, like, changed my <laughs> mind of when I close my eyes and think of Atlantis. Like, what am I going to think about? I don't think I'm just picture, think, like, like a huge island being submerged in water. Like, I don't really picture much about the... I don't know that I'm even going to see it submerged in water. Like, I don't know. I think I'm going to connect it more like to Indiana Jones. Like it's just a dig. Somewhere. Yeah. I don't even see it as a water necessarily anymore. Who knows? I mean, could it just... Like... I mean, it, I'm not saying it couldn't be, but I'm just saying I, I just, I don't know. It just popped under another continent. <laughs> it could just be traveling out there, is all I'm saying. It went into inner... It could. It could. It's a traveling continent. <laughs> <laughs> like, as like... soon as you get close, it moves. It's like the Bill and Ted phone booth of a, of a continent. <laughs> That's what it, mystery solves. You were looking for the wrong thing. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, I mean, it could be in space. Still Who would knows? not be enough, probably, to get me in the water, though. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I wouldn't think that that would be... I was, I was kind of surprised you covered that. Yeah. So you, like, I mean... Our I, adventures. I'd be cool being on the boat doing sonar stuff or stuff from or, the plane or stuff from the or land. Like a, or like a witch board. But definitely not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely not diving. I don't really want to dive either. Diving's not, I love the ocean, but I don't like not being able to breathe. So I, somebody else is going to have to do that. Well, there we go. Sorry. Not doing that. 
that was a really good story. I really liked it. What do you guys think, Rude? Do you have any thoughts or theories? Preferred ideas. Yeah. Or preferred, I don't know, menu item for Bojangles? <laughs> you know, I was really craving a gravy biscuit from there the other day, and I just cannot get that taste out of my... Like, I really yeah. want a gravy biscuit from there, and I don't eat sausage, but dang. I really wanted some bow rounds while I was sick. Mm -hmm. That would have really hit the spot. Yes. I wish you were closer, or, or I wish Bojangles was near you. Maybe I should open I would, one franchise. Out maybe you should. I I would door dash you some Bojangles, but there's not one anywhere near you. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> sad day. It is a sad day. Well, should we spin the wheel? I guess we should. See what the heck we're going to talk about next time. What are we going to talk about next time? No, so I said next time. Because shit keeps coming up, and I'm like, I don't know when we're going to record next. <laughs> Not until well, the Mercury retrograde's over. Well, we well we got to Wednesday, and things should be hopefully back on track. All right, all See right, here we go. spinning. Yep, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, 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 oh. oh. a possession. Like all right, possession. We haven't done one of those in a while either. Yeah, no, we haven't done one of those in a while. So that'll be a good spooky one. Yeah, I mean that'll be a good one to kick September off with. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, Del, thank you for that story and thank you for recording while you're sick. I hope you feel better. Yes, you're welcome. I hope everybody can actually hear me. <laughs> I think you did great. You did fantastic. <laughs> well, guys, as we say on our lovely podcast, stay safe out there, friends. Stay curious and never trust the living. The living. Seriously. For real, though. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Bye.